we watch Korean content, and you know, like if I can watch that, then I can watch you know anything from India. And it's it's a it's such a beautiful way for us to discover different parts of our country. I mean, I didn't understand this industry and how it worked in critics and how they do things. So I was a I was not a bit depressed is an understatement. I was <laughs> depressed. Certain ethics would be nice if everybody followed. And the uh, sad part is you don't really need anyone can be a critic now. You have a handle on social media and you're a critic. Today I'm speaking with director R. Balki and Dulkar Salman about the next film, Chup. Hi, welcome to The Quint. Hi, Hi, thank you. Okay, a film about a serial killer hunting down film critics. What prompted you to make a film like this? Was it a film review that kind of instigated you or put this idea on your mind that you want to do this film? Um, yeah, it, it started way back uh, when I did Genie Come. And one of the first most um, influential reviewers those days, I won't take his name. Um, uh, and, and, and I thought it made a pretty decent film and uh, a lot of people did like it in the first show that we had. So like most filmmakers, I thought I'd also made a good film. And I uh, discovered the Saturday he had slammed it to pieces. And I, and I, I mean, I didn't understand this industry and how it worked in critics and how they do things. So I was, a, I was not a bit depressed is an understatement. I was <laughs> depressed. But it never, though the film worked, though the film was liked by people, it never, I never got over that uh, review. And it stayed in my mind from that time. And every time I've been wanting to write it, something else has come up. And some, I let it brew for a long time. And it suddenly happened one day and I called him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Now we're going to watch a serial killer hunting down <laughs> film <laughs> critics. Yeah, it's a, it's not hunting down film critics. It's not about that. Um, it's about it's it's about a story of sensitivity. You know, I've always been fascinated by this entire uh, uh, you know off balance relationship, which is like somebody spends three years, and I happen to be in the public domain. I happen to put out my creative piece of work, whether it's a film or an art or a book or whatever, a piece of art or book anything, and somebody spends an hour or two kind of writing whatever they want, and goes away. The issue is not one of saying please praise me or please like me, yeah. of course be sensitive even if you don't like me. That's not the issue. The issue is, I am accountable. He's accountable. So if I, if I do a bad job, there are enough people to, to ensure that they don't come and see me. There are people to talk about, uh, you know, what I've done is wrong. But if you do a wrong job, who is there to tell you? I don't have any way of getting, of having my say about your work like you have your say of doing my work. And it's very wrong to say that, I mean, reviews don't matter, the audience decides, then why are you there? Obviously, it very influence people, even if you influence one person and influence wrongly. I'm saying both ways. Yeah. Uh, if you say something bad is really good or something good is really bad, both ways is wrong because I think your cause, a responsibility that you have as power. You know, some, mm -hmm. when you mistake responsibility for power, it's when the chaos happens. <laughs> yeah, in a way, like try and be sensitive. Yeah. You can it critique, yeah, just true. try and be sensitive. Yeah, that is what it is. And it's not an anti, it's not about, about critics. It's also actually ammunition for critics to tell artists, hey, look at us like this. That's okay. interesting. Yeah, it's just not a thing about artists raving about uh, critics. Um, if you had to change one thing or say more than one thing about film critics, what would that be? If there was some sort of meter or like something that is, um, where there's some guidelines or something that, that you follow, that everyone adheres to, you know, so there's a certain uh, standard that is followed by everybody. Certain ethics would be nice if everybody followed. And the uh, sad part is you don't really need, anyone can be a critic now, you have a handle on social media and you're a critic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and those are also, even though maybe they might not have huge following and stuff, but like if you hashtag a film, you can still read yeah. as much negativity as you want. So there's no responsibility there whatsoever. It would be nice if there were some standards that could be set. Uh, I changed their job. <laughs> 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 I, I feel just you're a lover of cinema, you've got a job yeah. which actually gives you the license to watch movies as a profession. What can be more beautiful than that? Yeah. Just enjoy that damn thing <laughs> rather than just saying, Oh, I found a Bakwas film. Yeah. <laughs> you come like a hero out of the theatre saying, Isko aisa bajaunga, aisa bajaunga, aisa karunga. Hey, That is not. You, you don't like a film, absolutely fine, but there's a way to say this is what I didn't like about it, this is what I felt can be done better. There's, there's a conversation, we lost civility in, in conversation, you know, it's about that. And it does hurt. How are you going to pay for my hurt? 
My question is very simple. Since I'm not talking just of critics. I'm not of any, any, anything, even at home. Uh, like when you're, uh, anybody at home who's making food, the man, the woman, or the house help, whoever. You spend two, three hours cooking something, making something, a lot of effort goes in. You eat in one second, rubbish food, yeah. Mm. It does hurt. How do you say something to people who put in an effort? My only thing is, okay, I can't change you, but how do I insult you back? Yeah. <laughs> I guess you've, you've somehow in the trailer, you all have also touched upon the fact that um, critics and the media are gifted things and, you know, some of the reviews are kind of influenced. Um, is that something that you're also kind of taking on in the film in a larger way? No, no, no. no, no. no. It's not a cause-driven film like okay. that. No. <laughs> No, no, we are not saying. Of course, we'll we'll say anything that has to be said. Yeah. But which all uh, whatever whatever is happening, that yeah. it's a film is not about that. Yeah. The film is about one person's trip. I it can't is wait not to watch the message. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you got Raja Sen to be, I think, a co-writer and a screenplay. Uh, he wrote the screenplay with you. How was that for you? What kind of stuff did he bring to the table as a critic? No, it's very strange how the Raja's thing happened because. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Rishi has been in my team, he was an AD first yeah. and he is actually cool, he's written everything with me. Yeah. Uh, and in this film, when I was telling Rishi this thing, I said, see, if we do the film, if we write it, and I was very clear of the story and everything, it'll be from our perspective, I need the other side. I want to see how they feel about us. So I said, okay, and I didn't know Raja at the point of time. And I called Raja one day, uh, just before lockdown, and I said, listen, uh, would you like to be killed? <laughs> he said, what, what, what? I told him the story. He said, come over. Would you like to kind of sit and jam and write? He said, I'd love to and everything else started. So I got a lot of healthy uh, insights into him, from him. How do they think of us? Uh, how, what do they think of us? Do they, do they kind of, you know, are irritated with us? Uh, do they feel we are oversensitive or do they feel this? They feel we are, you know, we only call call it corrupt and we only corrupt the system and call it corrupt. Are we doing all this stuff? So the, those kind of insights I need. So for me, it was important to get those real life uh, insights of things. And when I said before, before uh, Chup, I said, the only way to do this film and get therapy is to read everything that's ever written about me and about things. <laughs> Went wow. back and read everything. And it was so beautiful to discover that the person who slammed me, most of the fellows sitting here, were invited <laughs> into my room and he's sitting there. You know, in the trailer, we've noticed that you've also referenced Guru Dutt's film Kagas Ke Fool and some of the songs as well. Is this film somewhere touching and playing a homage to the director as well? Of course. Yeah. Hugely. It's definitely a tribute, tribute to him. Uh, yeah. But it's not about him. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So what is it exactly that we can see that you're paying a homage to him? Is there a reason that you're doing paying a homage to the director? He's the biggest example of uh, of the most sensitive, one of the really sensitive artists and the most uh, affected person by the non-performance of a film. Right. And that to me, because a lot of people, like Shori has got bad reviews. Yeah. It went on to become super superhero. Yeah. He had bad reviews and the film didn't do well. And he never made a film after that. That pains, that pain can happen to a lot of people. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's almost like you get goosebumps thinking of a yeah. person like that who nobody helped push the audience towards that film. Dulkar, you know, your previous films have been more of like slice of life films, like they're lighter. What made you choose a thriller like this? Was it bulky, sir, or was it more than that as well? I've always liked uh, uh, the genre uh, of like thrillers and investigative films. And I keep trying to, um, to change it up all the time. Uh, but I, f I feel like it's most it's easiest for me in Malayalam because I do the most uh, number of films in Malayalam in a year. Yeah. So I can constantly plan uh, a lineup of films and I can plan different genres and different characters and uh, I can plan that lineup much easier. But when I venture into other languages, it's it's not so easy and there's always a gap. So yeah. I think my first two films, like you said, were Slice of Life or one is a rom-com. So this is a bit of a no-brainer for me because I was like, hey, I get to break this mold. Uh, especially with the uh, Hindi-speaking audience. And I love that Balkiso was doing something uh, so different from his other films. And in general, I feel like the idea itself is so new. But I loved it. I loved it. Uh, as you're telling me the idea, I was like, I have to be a part of this film. It scared the hell out of me. And I was like, <laughs> that's what I want to do. <laughs> uh, Bupat, you know, what is your take on nowadays? A lot of films have a pan-India release. Uh, what is your take on the fact that these pan-Indian film releases are kind of bridging the gap, you know, and the divide? Earlier, we'd say South film and you know, Bollywood, but now people are saying, hey, let's just call it Indian film industry. What's your take on that? Love it. Uh, I think it's the best thing that's, that's happened. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like it's just happened on its own. It's, uh, it's been quite uh, 
organic in that sense. I'm sure like you know, the opening up of OTTs has helped. I, the pandemic strangely helped. Yeah. Uh, just just bringing um, you know more viewers to all kinds of cinema, and I think I think in just as consuming content from all over. You know, even if you watch Korean content, and then you're like if I can watch that, then I can watch you know anything from India. Yeah. And it's it's a it's such a beautiful way for us to discover different parts of our country. You know, it's yeah. uh, stories told. If I just take Malayalam, for example, stories told in in Malayalam from certain remote parts of the state, even for me, that's a cultural experience, and I'm Malayali. Uh, so I, I can't imagine what that must be for like somebody from another another part of India. So uh, I'm loving that, and I love that now uh, when we dub a film. There's there's a there's a wonderful sort of little discount that they give you. You know, they they're like we understand it's dubbed, we understand the lip sync is off, we understand the song lyrics might not match entirely, and but they still watch it because they want to understand they, and yeah. they're entertained by it and uh, it's, 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 I think it's been a long time coming and I'm glad that it's, it's happening. I think everyone's very happy about that. Yeah. Last question, uh, Mr. Amita Bachchan has turned music composer for your film, from what I read. Um, how did this collaboration come about? How does this happen? <laughs> it's just a, it's too much of a term, Larry. Just, just a, a little gesture on his part when he saw Chup and he felt something towards it. And he went to the side, played something on the piano, and he played it to me and saying, this is what I feel about him. This is what I felt about Dulkar. This is what <laughs> I felt about Sunny. This is what I felt about Shah. He was just playing it as a feeling for the overall film. He said, I have no words to kind of describe. These are things I felt. And I said, what are you going to do? It's beautiful. What are you going to do with it? I said, give it to me. I said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'll play it in the titles. <laughs> because I, I don't need a song uh, for that stuff. I just want to play it in the titles. So that's all that, that happened. And I said, but I just cracked a joke from saying, Thank you for making your official debut as a musician. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you think Mr. Amitabh Bachchan can't add the word debut next to his name, he will surprise you. <laughs> Thank you so much and good luck Thank for the you. film. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.